in a historic victory, Bangladesh defeated Sri Lanka the first time by three wickets in the first ever World Cup win over their neighbours. Winning the toss and choosing to bowl, Bangladesh restricted Sri Lanka to 279 runs. In response, Bangladesh reached the 280 runs target with seven wickets down. Captain Shakibul Hassan and Nazrul Hassan Shanto's partnership of 169 runs was pivotal in securing the win. This victory moved Bangladesh to the seventh position. Very important point, the seventh position in the World Cup 2023 points table while Sri Lanka dropped to the eighth position today. Australia faces Afghanistan uh, in the ODI World Cup today. Despite Afghanistan's earlier upsets, Australia has a perfect record against them in the ODI matches, which is perfectly understandable. The match will be crucial one as both teams aim for a place in the semi-final. But more importantly, we'll take a step back, go to yesterday's important incident, if not the match, of the timeout. David, you seem to have a lot, lot many opinions about everything in the world of cricket. So what's your view? Was it right, wrong, okay, by the book, without the book, in the spirit, in the love of the game? Just let us know what your answer is. Matthews fan, but I don't care how senior you are, how experienced you are, your equipment's got to be in order. You've got to be ready to face the first ball. If you, he, you know, he put his helmet on right at the last minute. You should have checked it first. You're timed out. As, and, and as um, Shakib uh, Al Sam was saying, the, you know, the captain of Bangladesh, it's warfare. This is World Cup. And if someone is taking that, treating the game so casually as to delay the game whilst he gets himself ready, a simple inquiry to the umpire. This guy's not ready. He's timed out, isn't he? Yes, you're out. End of story. And for uh, Matthews to be throwing his helmet down, uh, he should know better than that. He should be setting a better example to the younger players. If you're given out, you put your bat under your arm, you take your gloves off and you walk back to the pavilion. End of story. Absolutely. But why is there so much of surround sound regarding this incident? Be understandable because this is the first time it happened. Uh, That's... Well, that's why there's so much fuss, because it's the first time these rules have been tested. Absolutely. But, you know, the time in time, everyone knows in Village Green, everyone knows about <laughs> the timed out rules. The fella takes too long and hasn't put his ads on in time, you're out. Remember the famous occasion when Ronnie Sarwan, in the, in the, I was always going to mention West Indies, in the World Cup in South Africa, took an ill-timed loo break and was unable to take up his position in the batting order, Shiv Chand had to come That's in. That's an interesting and... point you make. Yes, yes, you all remember that. It's always nice to have an, uh, an English fan and an English watcher and an Aussie podcaster who's always uh, up with the sharp ones. Paul, I welcome to the show. How does it feel uh, to be in a precarious situation where you've been used to at the top of the table now you're just about there? How does it feel to be there? And we'll ask David another question. How does it feel to be lonely at the bottom of the table, considering they were the defending champions? But you first. Hi, Sunil. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Go on. Uh, well, I, I think that, um, firstly, just back on the, um, the, the timed out incident, I, I just think it's a pretty sad precedent to set after about a quarter of a million dismissals across men's and women's cricket. We've never had a timed out. Angelo Matthews, he was sauntering a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. I actually put the timer on him, and it was a minute 55 when his um, chin strap broke. Uh, I just think um, it's not the point we want to get to where hold we're on, forcing... Hold on, it was minute 55 when he reached the crease. The idea is you need to be ready to face the ball. And by the time it happened, it was well over two minutes. I, no, I just did the timing now. I just watched it on replay with my stopwatch. Um, his chin strap broke a minute 55 seconds after the catch was taken. And yeah, probably not as quick as ideally would be the case, but there have been plenty of batters who have been pretty slow coming out there. And I, I just think that the captains uh, owe it to world cricket to not get themselves into these situations. And I think that um, Shaki Bel Hassan in time will come to, to regret making this decision because... Um, it wasn't as though he was being extraordinarily um, slothful in, in walking out. So that's one thing I'd say. But in terms of where Australia is going, um, I think we're absolutely flying uh, after the terrible start to the World Cup. We now look like we're going to come probably third, um, a, a semi-final meeting with South Africa. And we 
we've done pretty well in semi-finals against South Africa over the years. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely. But David, how does it feel to be lonely at the bottom? You didn't answer that. Well, um, I'm feeling lonely because I'm one of the few pundits who predicted early England's early exit. Michael Vaughan on the BBC yesterday said that no pundit had, could have predicted England not winning, not reaching the semi-finals. Well, your correspondent here predicted it. I take no particular pleasure in that. I just think this was a car crash waiting to happen from the, from the start. And I was on with Paul before, where Paul predicted the England victory. And I said, look, it's not going to happen. It has only been one victory, and that's over Bangladesh. They've lost to every other team. So, yeah, it's a bit of uh, a lonely place to be, not only someone who predicted that England would be out, but who predicted it from the outset and has been calling for changes and has been very critical of this glut of short-form cricket that England domestic players are But what's this romance with uh, hundreds? It's an inconsequential, unaccepted uh, kind of form of cricket, I mean. I mean, well, it's if, not... If you were uh, in business, would you set up your stall to compete with the IPL? It is a joke. How can you compete <laughs> with the world's greatest T20 tournament? And to have the arrogance to create a whole new format where the overs, oh, you don't even have six ball overs. I mean, you don't mess around. If you're a cricket board, you don't mess around with the laws like that. That's not your place. That's not your prerogative. England talked about selling this format all over the world. They couldn't even sell it to their closest neighbours. Have we got any close neighbours anymore? Even the Netherlands wouldn't touch it. And the Netherlands look like they could finish in front of England. Uh, we'll know that and we'll know more about that tomorrow. Well, absolutely. Tasneem, the, the Zimbabwean international cricketer, a mother of a 13 months old boy <laughs> who's still going strong after the experience. How was your experience last night at uh, the Arun Jaitley Stadium? Yeah, you know, good, good day to you all. It was just brilliant for me. You know, the atmosphere in the stadium had me feeling like maybe I still got another 10 years left in my boots. Probably got to find myself playing on that field, standing in the center of it. And just hearing the crowd go crazy, it was just brilliant for me. Well, absolutely. What's the, what's the latest from Ankhede right now, Tasneem? Just so, so currently for you from that ground right now, Afghanistan won the toss and they've chosen to bat, sending in the Aussies to have a ball first. Um, they're playing 11, still looking good for me, you know. I think they've gone with the choice of possibly maybe taking out just one extra spinner as opposed to bowling the four spin bowlers today because... We do know that the pitch in Mumbai doesn't exactly have the most greatest assist for spin. Right. And they've just gone with their guys that are probably more consistent for them. And I think they'll be banking on, you know, Rashid Khan to try and come to the party today. He's been out there probably just building up the pressure, but not really taking much wickets. But in the same sense, the pressure he keeps building on brings about the opportunity for the likes of Mohammed Nabi as well as Mujib as well in the squad. Well, that's exciting. Paul, I'd like to come to you for, with a fan question. Australia is unbeaten in the tournament uh, with a formidable li batting lineup with a world class bowling attack after the initial setback. Afghanistan also is in a big form, considering that they are giant killers. Does that bother you as an Aussie? Yeah, I, I think there's, um, you know, obviously I think Australia is strongly favoured to win this game tonight, but an upset wouldn't surprise me at all. I think it's a very good toss for Afghanistan to win. I think that chasing at the Wankhede has been more difficult. Uh, yes. It's quite hot, so the Australians are going to feel the, feel the pinch. And um, one of the things that Australia always does struggle with is our middle order up against higher quality spin. And there's no higher quality spin attack um, alongside India than Afghanistan. So, uh, you know, I think if, if Afghanistan were to win tonight, it wouldn't be a disaster for Australia because our position is now so strong that uh, mathematically we could miss the semi-finals. But in reality, I think we are going to make them and come third. Um, and it would be great for the tournament if um, Afghanistan could go into the final game against South Africa knowing that if they could win, they could um, pull off an extraordinary um, bid for making the semi-finals. Not that I'm hoping that will happen, but if it did, it would be good for, it would be good for world cricket. No, absolutely. Do you rue the fact that uh, we still haven't gone last over or last ball finishes like we had in the T20 World Cup? Or, or it is an uh, acceptable fact now that we will not get close finishes, considering that there is a disparity between the skill of the top four teams and the bottom six? Your views, Paul? 
I think the last couple of weeks, the tournament's really heated up and it's starting to get some momentum. Um, yeah, there haven't been a, a huge number of really close finishes, but I think there's been a lot of talking points. And I think that there's a, a, a you know, the, those early weeks where it just didn't seem to be igniting, that's changing. And I can certainly say from Australia, and obviously Australia starting to do better has made a, a difference, but it, it's being talked about a little bit more here than it, than it has been in the past. And it needs to be because... T20 is all the rage, and the the 50 over World Cup, um, its position in the in the hierarchy is under threat. Will it be around in four years, eight years, twelve years time? I hope it will be. So, well, um, well you know, Paul, would you this- would you agree? Because this missile has come from the MCC president, who's a, a former or or a current uh, television host or a commentator and a former player of little repute, but. Uh, Mark Nicholas, do you subscribe to the theory that he's been aiming to shut down uh, the ODI 50 over format? Uh, well, I think Mark Nicholas had a, had a much better career than I did as a cricketer, I'll say that. But I, I think he's coming from a good place. I think he is um, earnestly saying what he, what he thinks is the right thing. He does have a point. that bi- He said that bilateral one-day cricket should be cancelled because it is it is really struggling and cricket with the three formats at the top level level when you've got um, a one day series involving two teams that has kind of no deeper meaning when t20 cricket is all the rage uh it is dragging um dragging things down so i i think that what he has said is a valuable addition to the conversation and regardless of whether he said it or not i'm sure a lot of administrators are feeling the same way well david you've been a broadcaster yourself you're the one who introduced cricket to channel four take a step back we are talking about three hours of live television as compared to 10 hours of live television look at the commerce side of it when a 50 over match happens you you get inventory which of obviously gets more revenue are you worried about uh, the the larger picture which is the revenue vis-a-vis what you see in stadium because what you get in the stadium is 30 40 thousand but on television you have huge uh, reach out. So, what's your view? And uh, would you like to counter Paul for once on 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 well, the television channel? Yes. Yeah, Paul and I have agreed on many things. We we won't agree on this particular point. Um, the fact that ODI cricket is under threat from administrators who are gorging themselves on this orgy of T T Twenty cricket. It's the T Twenty bilaterals that are irrelevant. The ODI. Uh, bilaterals need to be given context and the ICC needs to be culpable, not just Mark Nicholas. The ICC have called for a review of the 50 over World Cup format. They're not showing any confidence in their own product, which is light, lighting up India and the world of cricket at the moment. Um, yes, beware of things that are all the rage. Uh, they too can pass, in the words of Winston Churchill, this too will pass. I mean, that you've got to have more faith in your product. And if I could w- w- choose one format to watch, I agree with Michael Atherton, who wrote last week that if he had one match to choose to watch before death, it would be an ODI because it's got everything. And an ODI in, in, in India conditions in particular has got everything because it challenges the batsman. And you're getting a game that has a lot more subtlety than a quick 2020 hit. You know, we all like a quick hit, but, you know, with David, fast food, you get hungry again David, really quick. David, and can I just say to Taslin, yeah, yeah. 10 years, she will still be playing. She's got loads of the future in front of her, and of course she'll be playing there. And can I ask Paul, with his Australia hat on, today, he said something very interesting. Australia have to be good against spin. You know, possibly the finest player against spin, Steve Smith has been left out of this Australia team today. He's not in that final 11. And the Australian middle order has been juggling around. uh, And uh, you never quite know who's in there. And I think that is a potential weakness for opponents to target. Thank you. And I'd also ask Paul how it feels to play Afghanistan, given that the Australian national team could not be bothered to send the team there. They cancelled their tour at short notice on the grounds that Afghanistan doesn't have a women's team. That, Paul, uh, will, Afghanistan has the Taliban in uh, now. Women aren't even going to school. David, Never mind David, playing cricket. How do I stop you here and get Paul to answer two pertinent questions? <laughs> the first, yes, Paul. You've got the, well, you've six, got the dagger on to you. Just just go on, <laughs> aim at him. Aim at the Englishman. Uh, Steve's oh. only out because he's sick. 
Uh, he's got vertigo. He was vomiting and very unwell before play. So it's not like it's a decision that they've chosen. He would have been in the side had he been fit. Um, secondly, um, yeah, I think it's a very good point. Now, Australia, on a morally a moral principle, um, refused to play Afghanistan in bilateral series because of the fact that the Afghan women's team has been shut down. Hold on. I'm a, as, a, as a position of strength and someone who's followed the women's cricket all his life and authored a book, I can tell you, Afghan did not have a women's cricket team ever. So that was a frivolous, inconsequential and completely mundane uh, argument that they had come for. But I'll still give you the time to answer that question. No, it's more around the fact that the Afghan um, leadership has banned um, women's sport uh, and, women's, and women playing cricket. So it's a, it's a morally principled stand on that regard. But the, the point is a very well made one. Why is it that Australia then choose to play yes. Afghanistan in the World Cup? If you're Today, going to be in it for Because of the two penny, points and make it to the semi final? Well, that's, the, that's yeah, yeah, absolutely right. And the Australian Cricket Board has released a statement saying, well, the reason is that we get to control who we play in bilateral series. We don't get to control who we play in World Cups. But I would say if they're going to take that stand, then really they probably should see it through and um, yes. do the harsh thing and lose two points in the World Cup, which they have done before um, for, for other reasons. It would be a very difficult thing for them to do. But I think if they're going to take the stand, then they, they probably need to go the whole way. Yes. Well, if we had the time, we could have touched upon the 1996 World Cup where I think it was Australia who refused to travel to Sri Lanka because of the security reasons. Well, the other teams did travel there. But that's for another day, another discussion. Right now, before we wrap up, I'll, I'll get Tasneem Granger. Tasneem, what's the latest? What, what is your view about the pitch and what looks like a good score? Yeah, definitely. You know, this is one of the biggest pitches where the highest run, first inning run totals have been set on this pitch as well. Averaging somewhere around 320 plus. So I think um, Afghanistan would definitely want to find themselves in that position. They do have the likes of Ramat Shah in their, in their squad right now that's been doing great for me. He's been absorbing pressure, you know, and just been sticking out there, converting and taking the innings deeper. You can't forget the likes of Ibrahim Zadran, Azmatula Omazi. The Afghanistan squad for me right down to number five, six is definitely firing. And um, I don't think um, Australia can just entirely fall back on the likes of Adam Zampa to rescue them today. Well, with four spinners, David, what's your favourite team for today? Who are you backing and rooting? I know the answer, but the world needs to know. Will an Englishman back an Australia team today for once? Well, I don't back at short odds. And uh, Australia are bookmakers' favourites. The money is piling on them. So I'll go the other way and take Afghanistan 4-1, to one, especially as they vote that they've won the toss. I mean, Steve Smith, vertigo, is it from the dressing room looking down onto the pitch that he's had these sudden uh, palpitations, we wonder? Vertigo is a strange one uh, to pull out of the game because uh, last time I looked, uh, the game takes place on a flat uh, surface, more or less, and maybe a slight slope at uh, the ground, but not a major one. Um, so, no, my, I'm going to go with um, Afghanistan. Tasneem, um, with what's your view? Very quickly. So, as you know, I've been back in Afghanistan from the start of this tournament and that hasn't changed till now. Well, we have two uh, experts rooting for Afghanistan and one sole uh, ranger here with the Aussie team. It is always a pleasure to have Paul on the show along with David because they add in the spice, the perspective and some incisive uh, points that they make and we value that. That's all we had time for. Thank you, Tasmin, for joining us. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.